Hello, everyone. This is Gary Wilson, and welcome to this week's version of Real Estate Investing for Professional Men and Women. Welcome aboard. Chances are you're a chiropractor, you're a dentist, you're a business owner, you're an engineer, you're a pilot. All these great groups of people have been joining our community for, for quite some time now, for going back four years. Um, if you love the podcast, you haven't yet subscribed, please go ahead and do so when you're done. Uh, it's on iHeart, you know, iHeart Radio, um, you know, I'm, you know, just Stitcher, 75 different channels you can, you can subscribe to. And if you do want to be part of the community, please make sure you go to myinvestmentservices.com. Enter at any level you want. There's different levels. Just tip, stick your toes in for the moment and see what you think. But the point is, is there's a lot of us out here, professionals in our fields. We like to invest. We just like to do it honorably with integrity and with respect for the community and those that we're renting our houses to or selling our homes to because we want the community to win. We want the consumers to win, and we want to win too. And this is the right way to do it. So this is not the no money down stuff. It has its place. It's just not here. This is for people who really um, you understand the principles of business, which means putting skin in the game. So uh, welcome aboard. And uh, we've got a great guest today, Michelle Villalobos. We've known each other for probably four years now. We were all part of the same mastermind group down in Florida. And I got to know her a little bit. And one day she came in wearing a Diane Van Fosterberg dress. And I spotted her right away. <laughs> and she's probably wondering, how did I know it was a DVF dress? Because my wife loves her dresses too. And, uh, and I've, I've traveled all over the world. So wherever I go, she's like, find me a DVF. So in case that's my, one of the things I do for my wife is uh, send her flowers every day and find her nice dresses. So uh, Michelle is a great person, guys. I want to introduce her to you. Let her describe to you your, what, she, who, what she does because she has a great, great program going on and helps a lot of people. So Michelle, welcome aboard. Hi, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you here. I know it's been a while, and I'm so glad to, to, to hear you and see you. And uh, I appreciate you taking your time out of your day to do this. I know you're, you're a busy, busy person. I've seen your schedule, and I'm just honored that you took the time to do this and help provide value to all of my folks. So, uh, so if you don't mind, some people probably know who you are, but for those who don't, would you mind just giving them a brief uh, paint a picture of who's <laughs> Michelle and that'll help them understand maybe more fully when we get into more content, you know? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I founded a, a company called the superstar activator uh, who I am obviously is not my company. Um, but my company is pretty much the, the b biggest expression of my purpose in the world, which is to activate people, activate what we call superstars. So help superstars brand themselves, market themselves, and develop themselves so that they can make, so they can cultivate influence in the world and make a bigger impact in the world. So that's in a nutshell what we do. And specifically the way we do that is I do a lot of traveling and speaking at conferences and events. We lead seminars and workshops and and one of our core businesses is we, we lead uh, something called the Superstar Business Breakthrough Retreat. Awesome. Well, sir, so if you don't mind me asking, um, uh, what, what was your inspiration for, for creating this? Like, what led you to this? Was there something in your life and you're building your own business early on that you just sort of like, gee, if everybody knew this one thing, um, people could progress more quickly through their path to, to developing their own, their own businesses or something there you can think of like a, like an inspiring person or an event that led you to this. Well, so my business, I've been in business for over for 12 years now, for almost 12 years now. And those 12, in those 12 years, my business has evolved just like I've evolved mm -hmm. as a person. And about five years ago, after having been in business for seven years, I had a massive breakdown in my business and it was at that point in my life that was a defining moment where I had to number one come to terms with what I had built so far which was not much of a business at all it was more of a job that I had uh, I kind of painted myself into a corner in this job I didn't give myself any time off any breaks any weekends I was constantly hustling constantly working and when it all came crashing down I had the massive wake up call and I realized that I had built, you know, a, a job, not a business. And that what I needed was a new business model. And so I went and I shifted the business model. I had, you know, I had a brand in place. I narrowed the focus there, but really the big thing that shifted everything 
was shifting the model to focus on something that was more sustainable and scalable and more aligned with my natural gifts and strengths and talents as opposed to doing what I thought people would buy, but instead shifting the business towards what I was passionate about and what I really cared about. And that was the beginning of a, a massive blossoming for my business and also for me as a, as a person, as a woman, as a professional, and as a human. Nice. I, pre I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so let's do this. Um, we, you know, we met a couple years ago. It was at a mastermind group, and I'm part of a couple different masterminds. I run my own mastermind now, and I really, I mean, I don't just believe in them. I, I know they work because I'm a product of the product. I mean, I, you know, I'm always seeking out the, the next one I can join where I think I can add value and also learn and grow. It's, it's part of the world of abundance. But yeah. if you wouldn't mind, describe a little bit about like, um, so if I was, if I was one of your clients or I, I saw you on YouTube or something like that, and contacted you, what, what types of things are you looking for? Is there certain character traits you're looking for in someone you think, you know, at this person, I think would really fit in well and I can help them get from where they are now to where they want to be. Um, is there like an avatar that you yeah. can see? Yeah. For sure. So the, the kind of person that we can really support um, and activate is someone who has who is already or wants to be deeply desires to be some sort of thought leader in the world, someone who has a message or a mission and wants to add value to the planet in some way through that message or mission. So, you know, we work with a lot of people, you know, we work with a variety of different industries. So it doesn't have to be say realtors or speakers or coaches, although we work with all of those. But really, it's the, the realtor, or the speaker, or the coach who has a big message that they want to share with the world and who wants to add value to others through the work that they do. So it's people who are looking to take their business and turn it into a vehicle for transformation in the world. Yeah, I, li I like it. I'm thinking of, of all of the people I know that I've helped over the years. I've, I've uh, trained in classrooms over 20,000 people and in one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, over 3,000. And there are some common traits that I'll, yeah, I know I've been, been, been busy, but the, <laughs> but I enjoy it. I, I, hope, I hope my enthusiasm shows because I tell you what, Michelle, I wake up yeah. today as excited today as I did 17 years ago when I first started this. It you know? does shine through. I do feel it, Gary. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So, like, I'm, I'm thinking of a person right now like a um, – uh, uh, orthodontist who owns her own orthodontic practice and she, she's you know she's putting braces on kids and helping people have prettier more beautiful smiles and I know that she does things um, uh, charitably you know like there's a, a program where you can go overseas and volunteer your time your own time energy and, and, and financial resources to uh, uh, help children have beautiful smiles but the thing is like um, without any names I know she in her mind she's thinking well, she's fixed. Like you described yourself several years ago, you were kind of at a point, almost like a stuck state. You were the business, you were the brand, and there's 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So there's only so much Gary Wilson and Michelle can do, right? So uh, is, have you come across someone like that? Because I think someone like her, my gosh, she, could, she doesn't just have to serve people in Detroit, Michigan. I mean, I, I've, I know people who are dentists and Dallas, and they have people coming to them from all over the U.S. and Canada. And not only that, she can probably take what she knows and does because she's successful in her business and help other dentists around the U.S. and Canada build their practices so that they have five or six offices bringing in revenue so she now can work on the business and not be in the business and have more time to they will be more philanthropic. So, so your, your program, you see someone like that fitting in your program and, um, what would be something that they could uh, expect or like what would be a life cycle, a consumer life cycle in that, in that genre, you know? Well, so the first thing I want to just talk about really is where, when we work with people and this is for, for everyone listening so that they can get some value out of this conversation. You know, the first thing that we want to look at always is who is this person really? Right. Rather than operating from a place of what could this person do in the market, what opportunities available, what's possible. But first, what I call, I have a four step 
process that I work with people on. Um, and the first step is A, it's for alignment. And the alignment piece is the internal piece. And it's the part where we first say, all right, dentist, lady, <laughs> whatever your name is, yeah. who are you? You know, what do you love to do? What's your favorite part of the practice? You know, and we actually run people through personality tests. We do strengths finder. We do wealth dynamics. We do fascination tests. Like we want to understand who is this human and what are their unique gifts? What's their magic, right? Because a lot of times we get caught up in monetizing our time and our effort, yeah. and you alluded to it a minute ago, versus monetizing our magic, which is a whole different ball game. And so first we have to really understand what this person's magic is. Yeah. And so she might be a dentist who, you know, to use an example from like a wealth dynamics profile, which is one of the tests we use, she might be a, a dentist who's a creator profile, in which case, the answer for the creator is always going to be to create something that they can put out into the world and monetize rather than monetizing themselves or their time. Or she might be what we call a deal maker profile, which a deal maker is someone who loves being with people, networking, shaking hands, kissing babies. So that's going to be a very different type of operation or, or, or it's a different strategy to monetize that person's magic because their magic is completely different. And so the first that, you know, I, I would want to advise everyone is before we start thinking about what are the opportunities out there, we want to start making sure that there's real true alignment in here because especially yeah. with doctors and we see it a lot with lawyers, a lot of times they go down this path from a very young age without ever fully checking in. Is this the right path for me? And even if it is, like, is it this way in this environment, in this office structure, in this business model, or is there another way? Like you alluded to it as well, like a, a very, a supporter profile dentist would do very well probably to support other dentists in building their businesses and coaching them. And that might be a lot more fulfilling than say inventing a new procedure. So there are a lot of different avenues we go down, but the, the first, the way to get there first is to do the internal check-in. And there are six pieces of the internal check-in. Okay. The first is the identity piece that I just shared with you, but there's also checking in about the vision. Like, what does this person want? What, what's the desire, right? What is the future possibility that they would love to see for themselves? That's going to look different depending on who they are. You know, it might be a mom whose kids are getting out of school at two in the afternoon and she wants to be off every day by two to pick them up. That's yeah. part of the vision, right? We want to incorporate that in. There's the value system. Like, what are your core values? If she has a, a really strong value for environmental sustainability, then that's an area where we might want to explore, you know, dentistry and environmental, it's, you know, sustainability. So, you know, those are just, just to give you a kind of a quick overview of what we do in that identity phase. Mm -hmm. um, then there's also the life force piece. Like, how is this person's body? Are, how's their physiology? Are they healthy? Are they mm -hmm. feeling good? Are they you know, are they in optimal shape, you know, for themselves? So these are all considerations that come back to that first piece, which is the alignment piece. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. That just, everything you're saying really resonates so much. And I think a lot of people right now, their, their antennas just went up. Just after you just gave that last. I hope you, so. Yeah. Yeah. Because it really does. And one of my favorite sayings for myself is success is an inside job. It starts on the inside, you know, and your first thing you said was alignment. And man, that is absolutely so critical because when you have alignment, you'll, you'll, you know, I'm not saying you won't get tired some days and you just feel like you get beat up, but you're, you won't burn out. I mean, you'll just stick with it because the alignment's there. It's you're, you're serving your true purpose, your true calling. You know what I'm saying? And it just, you nailed it because one of the, 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 the parts of alignment is North, we call it North star alignment, which is uh -huh. the alignment with your purpose, yeah. with your, with your, with your destiny, with what you are, what you're really here to do, which is beyond make money and yeah. buy shit. Sorry, yeah, excuse that's my right. language. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny you mentioned, I'll, I'll, years ago, I went through this whole, almost like a rebirth. I basically went through a surrender is what I went through and got rid of the big giant house. I love beautiful homes. Don't get me wrong. I love big, beautiful homes. I just don't feel an attachment to it anymore. Got rid of the, both boats, yeah. the big SUV with the leather and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, so much happier now. I'm traveling. 
for me, it's relationships and experiences and, and going right. through. And that's your value system, right? You aligned yeah. to your value system and it's different for each person. Yeah, I agree. So let's, what I want to do is if you don't mind me asking you some uh, kind of a little granular here, um, what, uh, are there a couple things you could suggest to someone who's listening who maybe is kind of new at their practice or the business they own or they're new in their profession. And they got to that point, they're like, you know what? I know there's more. And, uh, and they're hearing this and they might want to come work with you personally, come to one of your events, but is there something they can do uh, that's like a um, like low barrier to entry, something they can find online, a quick test or a quick the profile or something yes. they can do to take that first step, you know? I would recommend listening. I have a podcast myself cool. and I have two episodes. Actually, I have several episodes that I recommend, but okay. I recommend going and checking out two of my episodes, which are very much in alignment with this identity piece. If this okay. part about um, the personalities, it piqued your interest. Then I, had, I interviewed Roger James Hamilton, who's the one that came up with the Wealth Dynamics Profile, which is the, the first test we give everybody. And he gave a free version of that on my podcast. So that's the cool. first one. And then we also, I also interviewed Sally Hogshead, who's a New York Times bestselling author and a Wall Street Journal bestselling author. And she had a book called How to Fascinate. She has like three or four books. Um, but it's all about not how, <coughs> not how you are as a personality, but how people see you. Yeah. And how you fascinate others. And there are 49 different archetypes or 49 different combinations. And so she also gives a free version of that test on our podcast interview. And I highly recommend those okay. for those two people. And then my podcast is like a real wealth of, if, if the idea of, if you're thinking more, if you're kind of really clear about who you are, what you love to do, and you're on that path, but you're thinking, hmm, this business model thing sounds interesting. You yeah. know, perhaps I, I want to explore a different business model that's more sustainable, more scalable. Then I have a whole episode on business models as well. So the podcast is, is the superstarpodcast.com and there's the episode with Roger James Hamilton with Sally Hogshead and then there's my episode, the business episode. Those are my, my, the ones that I highly recommend. Excellent. So the superstar podcast. Yep. .com. Okay. Excellent. Well, I appreciate that because I, I know for a lot of people, Michelle, they just like, they hear what you're saying. It makes sense to them cognitively. But when it comes down to taking action and practical matters, what I found is, boy, if, if, uh, if they just knew there's one little thing they can do that's an easy thing to do, they could do it by the they could do it like now. They could do it before they go to bed. That doesn't take any, it's low beer to entry. It doesn't take money, time, energy, other than maybe five minutes. That could be the one thing that gets them to take the next step, which is going to provide more, more, uh, more meaning to yeah. them and more impact in their lives. And I, boy, I got to tell you, I, 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 I I knew I fell in love with what you're doing years ago and hearing you talk about it more, more focused now. I wish I'd have done this two years ago, <laughs> you know, so uh, I might want to come to one of your events. In fact, I probably will come to one of your events, you know? Um, oh, please. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I, and for me, and that, it sounds funny to say this, but it's almost kind of a selfish thing because, you know, I, I like people to have their businesses, but I also like them to have a big pile of real estate, not to, not to be the empire builder, but to provide housing for others. And as a result, they, they generate revenue for themselves. So it's a win-win situation. But the income is passive. And what I mean by this is it allows yes. them to generate revenue from an income-producing asset that they work for once and pays them off repeatedly throughout their life. But what it also does is allows them to pursue their, their vision more fully. So when they find the alignment and they know what their vision is, you know, if they don't have any at passive income and they only have as a business, they at some point still have to work their business. So what this does allow them to maybe build out the business to a degree where they're they're on top looking at the business from above, spinning a top running it, and, and, and leveraging that to go out and do things that are that are more charitable, more fulfilling, travel, leisure, time with family, helping people put smiles on their faces. Um, so there really is a big loop there. And um, so I just want to explain that to people and, and to you too. I might it's uh I know it sounds funny to say it's selfish, but it really is, uh, you know, the, for me, the fulfillment comes from seeing a person develop. Like, it's not the tangible results they get. It's who they become as a person to be able to generate those tangible results. Because the tangible results yes. are simply measurements. 
who they become a person. That's the, if you, have you felt the same thing like that? Like you're absolutely. Yeah. We, we, well, I mean, I like to say that we focus in on three areas with people, their brand, their business model and who they're being. Yeah. And that's, and the who they're being piece really, you know, none of this works without that one piece. It's just so, so yeah. important. It, it's, it's the thing. And, and the, the, it's the thing that has the biggest impact on everything. <laughs> and so it's a big part. And that's a big part of like the work we do in a weekend is very strategic. We can have a lot of strategic breakthroughs in three days where we, we map out a new business model, a new business plan, like all that we do in three days, no problem. Correct. But the reason we have a business that goes beyond three day retreats and because we work with people for years at years is because the, the process of focusing on developing who you're being is, is a never ending project. It's, right. you know, there's breakthroughs in three days, but the mastery of the art of being is something that takes a whole lifetime and, 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 and it impacts everything. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, I, to me, what I realize it's a, it's a never ending process of growth. So when you discover that, that, that reality, it's like, it's not like you're done. It's simply a new beginning and you keep, growing. I mean, we're never, we never stop growing and Lord willing, I'll be here, you know, till I'm a hundred years old. <laughs> but I, you know, I plan on, like, I don't watch television anymore and every day I'm looking for, like learning draws me more to more learning. So, so what I want to ask you now, if you don't mind is this is, um, you know, people, we tend to, it's like we're, we're living, we're, we're in the world. We're not necessarily of the world. We're in the world. We have to, we do have to, you know, get along with others, have businesses, we've got to pay taxes, all this stuff that's material in a sense. But as far as time frames, like you've been doing this for 12 years. So you actually, man, you really, right at the beginning of that big giant recession, 2007 is probably about the same time you got started. And can you describe a little bit about timing through your journey, where you, where you were then, where you are now, and also how that affects other people? Because I know a lot of people in the recession, Michelle, they just, everybody went into retreat. And it was a shame because that's what caused everything to stay constricted. It wasn't what the, the economy necessarily was doing. It was what we were doing to the economy, you know. But in any case. We are the economy. Yeah. It's our behavior that drives the economy. And it's our outlook on the economy that drives the economy. So yeah. it, was, we, it was totally self-manifested. And, you know, Lord knows I had no idea when I started my business that we were heading into a recession. It was right at the beginning. Nobody had even diagnosed a recession yet. It was March of, it was, I left my, my job in March of 2007. Huh? And then I, and I, so it was literally 12 years ago and I incorporated my business in May of 2007. Yeah. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank Happy you. anniversary. <laughs> well, what's interesting is, uh, did your business, like, what was your growth rate during, say, the 2007 to, say, 2011? I mean, did you ever track that, like, 50% per year? 80%? Yeah, I have it. I have it. I mean, it, it grew very – I mean, it started at zero, so the growth percentages were very high in the beginning. <laughs> but, um, you know, I did – I'll give you really rough numbers from memory, but, like, I think my, my first year, I know for sure I made $39,000. Yeah. So that was bad. And from yeah. there, I think I made like 60 or 70 the next year and then 80 or 90. And then I finally broke a hundred. And then by the time, by the time I had my breakdown in 2007, April of 2007, to be exact, my business had gotten to 300,000, wow. but it was on my blood, sweat and tears, man. Yeah. I was hustling for that money every day. And it yeah. was up and down. It was a roller coaster. There were months where I made thirty or forty thousand, and there were months where I made zero thousand. Yeah. And it was a it was really stressful, and it was hard on my body. And that's what ultimately, you know, the breakdown actually came from a, a personal situation in a relationship. Yeah. But the, it was just the domino that sent all the other dominoes falling down, yeah. including my health and my emotional state. It just all kind of came crashing down at the same time. And it was the biggest blessing that ever happened to me because it's the thing that woke me up and, and yeah. had me reevaluate my purpose, my vision, my values, all the things and come into, into alignment with yeah. who I really am in order to create. And then from there, my business took 14 months and my business turned, went to seven figures in 14 months. Wow. Sounds like you and I went through a very similar situation. I know for me, it was looking back on it, probably one of the greatest things that ever happened in my life, you know? 
It's amazing. Yep, 100%. Yeah. And for everybody listening, I really want you to pay attention to this is, um, you know, Michelle said something really poignant, which was she really wasn't even aware. I mean, I knew you were aware, but she wasn't considering the recession or whatever. She just followed her passion and her business grew during the worst years of the recession. And so that I, I learned this years ago, guys, is, man, don't, don't, it's like in real estate, the old people say, I'll wait and buy, I'll wait till the market drops and I'll buy. Like, it's no different than a stock market. You can't time things, you're gonna, you're gonna lose. It's better to buy and wait. Don't wait and buy, buy and wait. So in your business, if you're growing your business, folks, listen to this, and you do want to invest in real estate, do something now. Don't, you know, pe- turn off the television for one thing because they're gonna, they're gonna basically get you down that, that rabbit hole of fear. And I can tell you, success does not come from a place of comfort. Success mm-hmm. is almost always associated with discomfort. When you grow, you're going to be forcing yourself out of your current boundaries or field of vision. And what's interesting is you actually get used to it. You get comfortable being uncomfortable. So the point I'm trying to make is timing is irrelevant. You know, you can start anything you want in any economy. And I promise you, if the alignment's there, if your vision is clear, you're going to, you're going to succeed, you know. Um, so I hope that that helps a lot of you listen to this. And, uh, and one more thing, I know we're getting close, Michelle, here, but as far as the where, like you're um, – as far as I recall, you're in Florida, but um, you've traveled a lot too. I'm sure you've traveled like I have. I, 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 my address is Marriott. <laughs> That's what it feels like, you know. Um, but the, as far as where, um, like when you do events, if someone wants to try to find you and come to one of your events, are they always in Florida or how do you, like, uh, where do you generally have workshops and events and things like that? So, well, first of all, I, uh, after my business went started to grow, in 2014, 2015, really, I, I packed up all my stuff and I moved um, and I became nomadic and I went on a road, on, out on the road. And I ended up buying Colorado, which I had for years and I just recently sold. I should have listened oh, wow. to you, Gary. I hung <laughs> on to it because um, now that market is going crazy. Yeah. But um, I sold it just in time to miss it. So you're right about that timing thing. Yeah. But um. So now we do events here and we do them out West as well. Um, here, here being Miami. Um, so we do, uh, we do retreats here three or four times a year. And then in Denver about two, two to three times a year. Okay. And then we also do half day events and one day events. And I speak all over the country mm-hmm. and I also, we're doing something in November called superstar summit, which is a gathering of, purpose-driven, mission-driven, heart-centered uh, superstars who want to make a difference. Uh, nice. So we're going to gather a whole bunch of those people here in South Florida in November. But people fly in, we'll fly in from all over the country for that. Okay. Yeah, I've got a, uh, my last three-day event is the first weekend of November in Dallas. So the rest of the month is freed up. And I'd love to come see you shine in person. I know your, your light yes. shines every time I met you. And I just, I know, I, I, I <laughs> see the pictures and the videos and you're really – you really are authentic and genuine people people love what you do and what you say that just you just connect with so many people so easily that's just it's you know I, 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 my my aspiration is to be able to keep developing that skill too is i, I i'm not the best mm-hmm. speaker in the world um but i but i do love to connect with people and it's just the best way i can help people is that just simply they would open up let themselves be helpable but um so in any case if you would yeah. if if you um and I kind of know the answer, but for everybody else here, uh, to really drive this home, like what what drives you? Is there um, like uh, you know the old story about the you ask a two year old or a two year old asks you a question why you give them the answer and what do they say again? They they say why they say why like five times. So if you don't mind sharing, go go deep. And what is your fifth layer, the fifth level of why for Michelle? Like 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 when you get up in the morning. There could be a hurricane coming in, and you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm, whatever that is. If you don't mind sharing, because I want people to, to really get to know you here, and uh, I'm hoping that this helps you help them, and everybody wins out of this too. You know? Yeah. For me, I think it's about creating, uh, about innovating, and creating. Creating. I've always, as a as a kid, I was I was an artist. Uh, you know, I love to paint and sing and dance and just create and serve at the same time through what I create. And I, and I, and I want to help other creators create and serve through their creations and, and do it joyfully 
in an energy rich way that feels good. You know, I want to feel good and I want other people to feel good so that more people are feeling good. You know, that's really, it might yeah. sound really simple, but that really is what drives me is and, and, and depth of connection too, like really deeply being heard, seen, deeply seeing and hearing other people like that really motivates me and drives me. Awesome. Well, at the, so if somebody wants to go to the, the, the event, say, in um, either Denver or the one in Miami, and, uh, is, is that, is it open to everybody? They have to apply or what's the process to get, like, is there a website they could go to and check it out? Or? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you that there is a bit of a process because, yeah. because our events are our retreats. We have the bigger events, but our retreat, which is our signature program is yeah. called the superstar business break. That is a, an intimate event with me, my whole team, and we really go all out and, and, and we go deep with people. So that event, we're really careful making sure that the people we bring in are people we can truly serve and who will not only benefit from the, the event, but also contribute to it as well. Yeah. So the process for everybody goes through, to just have a phone interview with our, what we call her, our program curate. And so she just makes sure that we can really serve people at the level that it's a good fit. And if it's not a good fit, she'll generally support them in figuring out what's a great next step for them. We have a lot of resources. We awesome. know a lot of people and we're usually able to recommend, all right, this, this would be a good, you know, next step for you. Awesome. Okay. Uh, uh, one more thing, if you don't mind, I know we're getting right on the few seconds left here. Um, is there a, a, a favorite book you've read, or maybe one you've even written yourself or an article or something that you think is uh, really inspiring as a real quick, something that people could read and uh, maybe help inspire them in this moment, you know? Mm. Oh, so I read about a book a week, Gary. Yeah, I read so much. So it's hard to give you one, but yes, you know, I, I'd say a book that recently uh, had a big impact on me is one, the four agreements by um, uh, the four, Raul, uh, what is his name? The four I know, agreements. I know who you're talking about. Um, he's got several books out. That's, I've read, he's got, yeah. I've read that one too. Yeah. Hold on. The four agree. I need to look this up because he's, you know, actually I recently was, was able to get on a, a call a, a mentor, a, a client of mine is a friend of his. And as a result, he created a zoom call for just like a really private Don Miguel Ruiz. That's his name. Um, yeah. and he was able, I, so I actually was able to see him live on a zoom call a few weeks ago, but that's nice. a really fantastic, Book the four agreements so simple so easy so yeah. profound it is yeah i read that probably seven no oh my gosh eight years ago what's well, on the b-list been that long and he's got other books i run into a great great writer I, uh, you know just that's interesting you read a book a week i'm so slow michelle that takes me <laughs> i go to bed at night and i read the that's my little mini vacation and uh and i usually wake up about an hour later and think holy crap i got through one page <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> But in any case, hey, listen, I, I think I speak for a lot of people, Michelle, when I say thank you for sharing your valuable time with us today on My this pleasure. podcast. Yeah, I, it's, you know, you're, you come from the heart. It shows your light shines. And this is, I'm so glad I did this. And for everybody listening, again, if you want to be part of the community, this is the kind of stuff we do. It's not just about making money. I know you want to make money. We're going to help you do it. But, you know, do it in a way that's in alignment. So you're fulfilled as a result. Come join the community. Go to myinvestmentservices.com. Just join up whatever level you want out. Just tip your toes in the water and get started. You know, subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe to Michelle's podcast, uh, the Superstar Podcast. Okay. Um, but in any case, I will see you all in the next version. Uh, in the meantime, have a beautiful day. God bless you and your families, and we will see you next time.